just in case the title isn't obvious yet, I know nothing about mechanical keyboards. As a matter of fact, I was never really interested in them. So when a company called IQNix reached out asking if I wanted to try one of theirs, my initial response was, sure. But of course, not without doing my own research, because obviously I wanted to know what I was getting myself into. But what I didn't know was I was actually about to jump into a rabbit hole that was so deep, it basically extended all the way out to the edge of the known universe. I was kind of shocked and in awe at the same time. So I'm going to try my best to share with you what I understand about mechanical keyboards and why they're so popular and what my experience is like. When paying for something that's significantly more than what one would consider a regular household item, the initial question is naturally, why? So to help answer that question, I had to first understand what a mechanical keyboard is. A mechanical keyboard basically use individual switches underneath the keycaps as opposed to a thin plastic membrane that regular keyboards use. This gives the mechanical keyboard a more tactile feel when you're pressing on the keys and Theoretically, they should last a lot longer. And honestly, that's pretty much the main difference. The end. Except it isn't. Part of the allure of a mechanical keyboard is the ability to customize it basically to your heart's content. Now you might be thinking, oh, okay, so let me change the color of the keycaps. Well, yes, you can do that, but it's actually a lot more than just that. Remember the switches that mechanical keyboards use? Well, there's three basic types. Linear, tactile, and clicky. Linear basically feels consistent throughout the pressing of the key. The key press actually gets registered once you press it all the way down. Tactile switches provide more feedback by having a more shallow actuation point and having a little bump mid-press to know that your keystroke was registered. Clicky switches are like tactile switches but has more sound to it, hence the name. Now, both tactile and clicky switches have a shallower actuation point, meaning you don't have to press the keys all the way down for it to register. But switches don't end there. Oh, no. There are more variations of switches than I have hours left in my lifetime. So for the sake of saving you time and myself, I'm just going to talk about probably the most popular ones, which are made by a company in Germany called Cherry MX. Under this company alone, they have four different switch types designated with a color name to define the actuation distance, switch type, and actuation force. I told you, rabbit hole. For example, what I have are Cherry MX Brown switches, which means they are tactile, have a 2mm actuation distance, with an actuation force of 55 gram force, meaning that's how much force it takes for the key press to register, which means different actuation forces can give different key feel. At this point, I'm like, what did I get myself into? Remember, there are other switches from other companies with their very own naming conventions and characteristics, which I won't go over because I want to witness my children grow. Aside from switches, you can also customize just about everything from keycaps to the actual case. Speaking of cases, there are a multitude of different shapes and sizes for mechanical keyboards. What I have here with me that iQNIX sent is a 100 key keyboard in the form factor of a 96 keyboard, I think. Basically, from my little understanding of it, the keys are much so close together, getting rid of excess space, making the overall footprint significantly smaller than a full-sized keyboard, while still retaining most of the keys, such as the numpad. The keycaps are called cat keycaps which are slightly shorter in profile than SA keycaps. How they differ in feel, I have no idea. On the topic of feel, that's probably the number one deciding factor as to why someone would switch to a mechanical keyboard. 
I've been using this keyboard for a few weeks now and it was no simple task for me. Because of the build quality, this keyboard is actually heavy. The case is made out of aluminum that are screwed together and honestly, looks really nice. I'm not a fan of any sort of RGB lighting, so I was a little hesitant with this having LED lights underneath the switches. Fortunately, I can turn it off by hitting Fn plus Z, although I was also pleasantly surprised to find out that I kind of like the LED colors at least once in a while. I can cycle through them by pressing Fn plus uh, this guy. And my favorite one is probably the teal color. The overall profile is taller, so getting used to typing on this with the already tall keycaps was a bit of a challenge. A wrist rest might be in order. I also needed to get used to the spacing of the keys since they were so close together. This works with my Mac computers, but I still get confused with the Win and Alt button since sometimes one works and one doesn't depending on what application I'm using. So I did a little research and found out that if I hold the FN key plus the A button for 5 seconds, it switches to a Mac layout. This keyboard is Bluetooth capable, but iQnix also provides a cable if you want to use a wired connection. And it's nice that they also provided a Bluetooth dongle in case your computer is not Bluetooth capable. Also, they included this little device to pull out keycaps if you want to replace them. As for the sound, well, that really depends on you. The clicky sound brings back memories from my childhood when my sister would type late at night for school. While I'm not particularly fond of the sound, it adds another sense of tactility to the typing experience, which in my case is a good thing. So to conclude, after a few days, I already started to notice that I looked forward to using this keyboard over the regular one that I had. It's almost like I had a new toy that I was still discovering different ways of playing with. These minute details about mechanical keyboards are very hard to quantify as they require personal taste and feel. What I can definitely tell you is that typing has never been more engaging, for me at least, which makes my day-to-day -day a little bit more interesting. I mean, I never knew that something as mundane as using a keyboard can feel a bit more um, intentional and maybe satisfying. But what about the price? Is it really worth all the hype? As a society that's basically always connected via technology, we've become increasingly sensitive to what others think of our every move, right down to the stuff that we actually buy for ourselves. We feel that we have to somehow have a list of justifications as to why we willingly parted with our money. I'd say it's just like picking a cologne or a body spray. So you choose the smell that you like best and then you decide whether you want to pay the amount for that very specific and personal experience. So at this point, I kind of understand why some people would pay an abnormally large amount of money for keyboards. I mean, what they're really paying for is a personal experience. And not only that, aesthetics does play a big role. There's so many variations that your head's going to fall off from spinning. And to find one that's perfect just you know, for your taste and the feel. I mean, it's it's kind of hard to put a price tag on that, to be honest. Remember, this is coming from a person who spent around 200 bucks for an Apple keyboard just because I liked the way it looked. Luckily, you don't have to spend that much money. I mean, at least in the beginning, if you wanted to maybe try your hand at mechanical keyboards. There are actually a lot of affordable options out there. The only thing is you just have to be brave enough to jump through the rabbit hole and hopefully you have enough time. Thanks again for watching. And if you like this video, please hit that subscribe button. Also check out my podcast with fellow creative Chelsea Horn called the Coffee with Creators podcast. We basically talk about tech, photography, and social media, and also just life in general as creative professionals. All the links are going to be down in the description below, and I'll catch you guys again real soon. Take care.